And then you can listen to the rest of it afterwards. <laughs> She'll be upset that you missed all the hot, hot takes and um, advice. This jumper is giving my primary school uniform jumper. It's so exactly you this need to put your L in the middle. <gasps> Flip off. And yeah. That's what, um, I was like carrying my bag of clothes on the train. I was like, I'm not doing the walk of shame, guys. <laughs> Welcome to The Vault with Financial, a safe space to talk all things life and money. Hello. Welcome Hello. to The Vault. Nice to be back. Um, as always, going to start off with the little TikTok, my favourite thing. Um, so let me know what you guys think of this one. You can't financially provide for me because I provide for myself. Mm -hmm. You cannot motivate me because I motivate myself. You cannot buy me a home because I've bought them myself. Mm -hmm. You cannot cater for me in that way because i can go and buy myself whatever the fuck i want mm -hmm. but where you can come in is you can mentally stimulate me mm -hmm. distract me from work in a positive way mm -hmm. book things for me mm -hmm. protect me mm -hmm. babe if i'm coming home from work and i'm tired sit me down be like you you eating today have you had food today and that didn't happen no maybe had i been patient it would have got better but in all honesty, I didn't want that. Like, I didn't want to wait. I didn't want to be patient for it. I'm going to be honest. Like, I need, I needed a man and I want a man who is like, babe, I've booked this place for us. I'm picking you up. Mm. You're out of office. I've mm -hmm. handled it with your PA. Mm -hmm. Sounds just think? like my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's Chrissy Cheller, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I've her. just got so much time for her as... As a, as a businesswoman and it's, you know, she's been through a real tough time, but a real amazing time when it comes to business. And I've not heard her speak like that before. That's a really interesting take on maybe like the di power dynamics and traditionally maybe she's felt that people she's been with, especially like, you know, maybe an ex-partner thinks that their job is to provide and, and then that's good enough. And it's really interesting how she's flipped the script a little bit. What do you think? We literally, it was recently, we wrote a blog about whether you should do like pay 50-50 for the bill and that kind of thing. And times have changed like massively. Like years ago, it would I think personally, she might have been on there saying, I want you to take me out for dinner. Like, I want you to buy me nice things. Because that used to be the rhetoric around, around like women, money and relationships. Well, in like Hollywood movies. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, what, that's what happens. <laughs> we have literally been brought up thinking that that that's what happens like you will be provided for you will be looked after and I think so many women had this vision of that's what it was but the, the script has absolutely flipped I think with that with female entrepreneurs coming onto the scene like your Grace Beverly and you, they can provide for themselves they don't so I feel like it trickles down it's like a fashion yeah, trend yes everything trickles down to us minions no it is it trickles down I think yeah. the sentiment and now is you know, there is much more equality and women do want to kind of provide for themselves. Like I've seen so many TikToks and you'll see them like really dramatic, like speeches where women's like, no one's coming. Yeah. <laughs> no one is coming. <laughs> like you've got to do it yourself. Mel Robbins. <laughs> Very Mel Robbins. Very like Oprah. But yeah, no one's coming. I quite like that. She's like, I don't, she got herself into a situation whereby whether a man is there or not, she's going to be okay. Hmm. Well, and, and so in what I like is she wants someone to care for her. That's what the message is. So yes. not to, so an empathy, it's like, can someone have empathy for what my day was like that you don't need, like you don't need to take me out to dinner and pay for it. It's more, can you, if you empathize with my life right now and you can see my back to back to back to back work schedule and the fact that I've probably not eaten that day, actually, I've gone, yeah. I've gone crazy. And you probably think that for my well-being, I need a bit of headspace. Like I might want you even to be like, I'm taking your phone off here. We're going to put it in that corner. Yeah. We're going to watch some like maths or yeah. we're going to... Um, Traitors. <laughs> and you were going to say that. There was some maths because that's a scary connection. But it, she wants someone that cares and, and that sits there and goes, I wonder what your day was like. L how can I help that? And that surprise and delight doesn't have to be a financial surprise and delight. It could be something really simple like cooking dinner or getting dinner or um yeah just like just thinking ahead. service me and my husband did like a personality quiz the other day like a, a, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and she, what was a good results? personality or a bad personality and we're still going strong so <laughs> was, you should not be together um my my thing that I appreciate the most is like acts of service so now 
he's very good at being like organized for me because I'm not, I'm quite <laughs> scatty and he's, he's become like, but he can recognize now that, oh, she's going down to London. She's not booked a train ticket. Do you want me to book the train ticket? That's actually two steps ahead. ahead. He's like, yeah. literally, I didn't realize it. Do a personality quiz. Like a couple, what, compatibility, you need to leave compatibility yeah. not a personality oh. quiz. <laughs> compatibility. <Boring. laughs> you are compatible. Well, yeah. Um, acts of service. So her love language is, looks like it's acts of service, yeah. i.e. not buying someone or taking someone somewhere, thinking about someone ahead of time and planning things for them and taking the mental load off them. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. What do you think about it though? I feel like she was clearly describing a past partner and she maybe hasn't had that before. But so I wonder if she got into a relationship where she got all of those things, mm-hmm. would she really be happy? Or is, that is it just ideal? the idea like yeah. creating someone in your head that does all of these things? Yeah, like she, a new boyfriend's like, I'm put, I'm like, well, you've watched this. I'm going yeah. to book a weekend away. Me. She's like, why have you done that? Yeah, I'm Gone so busy. Yeah. You can see it yeah. all falling apart now. Yeah. Oh, no, I'll I send like my it. husband around. I like the idea. <laughs> 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 so I've got a dilemma for you. Um, this is a funny one, I oh think. God. <laughs> so, should we keep splitting restaurant bills with friends who have children? I mean, we're the two with children and you're the one with that. <laughs> so, anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> Was this you, Lydia? Did you write this one in? <laughs> Me and my partner are lucky to be in a great friendship group who are super social. Many of the couples now have... Okay, this is definitely our life. <laughs> Going. Many of the couples now have grown up children. In fact, we're the only couple in the group without children. At least once a month. That's so organised for grown ups. This is definitely not us. No one wrote this about us. <laughs> we all make sure to get well, at least once a month, we all make sure to get to get to get together for a dinner in our local restaurant and we go and the go-to thing is to split the bill with no issues we look forward to these every month but for the past few times something has been bothering us recently the other couples have been bringing their teenagers along they all get along and spend enjoy spending time together it's great however we definitely have noticed the bill going up when we go to pay there's five children that come along so it does add an extra chunk onto the bill Without mentioning, we still just split the bill equally between the couples, which me and my partner are starting to get annoyed with. Are we within our right to say something? Should we continue to subsidise the other's children's... <laughs> the other's children's... <laughs> the other's <laughs> children. Or ask for a more way, more fair way to split the bill? I hate to be that person, but it... I hate to be that person, but it's itching away at us. Be that person. I Teenagers agree. are full-grown adults. Like, there is no way that if we like we don't have any teenagers that they're younger than that but we would never at the rate they eat like true determine that they <laughs> it's like so when they're so sometimes when they're little we've done it like where you just pay for adults because for the relative like four five pound children's meal that they may have not even eaten mm-hmm. the, the dads have all had an extra beer and, the, and it, yeah. you know, or, or a dessert or an extra and side we hang, out with, we hang out with people that have kids so you tend to split the bill I don't think there's a time where we would necessarily go out with people without some, children some family though we do it and we split and they don't have children and, yeah. and we tend to do it, it's more you can kind of get this is the same whether there's children or not by the way it could be someone who doesn't drink or it could be someone who like um, Holly's husband loves starters. It's his thing. And so <laughs> Starter, it's stressful. It's, he is. And it's stressful. You're really hungry because you know Smoke. the starters are going to come first. And you're like, can the starters come with me? <laughs> now, if, if I invite you to a small plates restaurant, do not come with me. <laughs> Go on the He's next like table. Beauty and the Beast be my guest. He's like, next, next. <laughs> Gambas pill pill. Well, times that's two. Gambas. It's like a nice, like tidy price. And so, um, but I think as long as you can recognise that and pay for your relative bits then splitting yep. bills fine which it might be I'll pay a little bit more or you can kind of see across the table that things have evened out but children like if someone doesn't have children and they're splitting the bill te- they're teenagers they're grown ups how do you do it I think she's got to get in there when it's the bill time you go and ask for the bill and then be like okay so they split it between it like just go and go and do oh, it they've, behind they've, they've the split box. it by people that's funny <laughs> I know whose children is yeah. who yeah oh yeah <laughs> They must or really you, know can, you well. probably have to be vocal about it. It doesn't happen the next time. Yeah. So grab the bill and be like, okay, so um, we've worked out that for your 
teens. Like yeah. make it obvious. Don't be like for the kids because if you're dressing yeah. them up as kids, it's like, oh, they are usually like, what, three to five pounds. So you can let it go. But teenagers, they're having a steak. I've got friends, yeah. kids that have steak and chips and Bougie. would have a glass of wine if they could. I feel like you've got two options to do that. Go or on. just go ham on the menu <laughs> and make <laughs> then up you get your for money's it in worth. yours. Yeah, get, get more credit. Like. Filet mignon. Do you want extra sauce? Yeah, I do. Do I want chunky chips instead of fries? Yeah, I, yeah, I do. Truffle make fries. Them truffle. <laughs> we, don't do, take, we don't do that wine by the glass. We'll have the bottle. Yeah, take the Tupperware. <laughs> get your money. Lydia, how would you handle, we've talked about bill splitting before. Come on, give us your tips. Oh, I don't want to confess what I've done. So now you, so now you have to. Did you run out? I, I snuck off and I was I paid for my own because it was like, at a Christmas thing, obviously a couple of months ago, I just snuck off and asked if I could pay my own thing because it was sixteen pounds instead of forty five. Respect, because I don't drink. Yeah, I'm sorry. And that's everyone's the- getting the cocktails in. It's like, yeah, get another. That's your takeaway on the way on home. The beaches. Sex is on the beach. Sex on the beaches. Sex on, <laughs> sex on the beaches. Sex on the beaches. Ish. <laughs> but, but I think that's fair. And, and and most normal people would be like, fair play and. You, you saying, I've paid my bit, guys. Did you, did you do a WhatsApp drop? I've paid. I'm sorry, I had to dash. My train was coming in. Don't worry, covered mine. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> Just run into the night. Like, yeah. yeah. Cinderella. I think that's fair. I, I do. I yeah. think you have to, you have to stand up yeah. at the table. Don't Shameless. worry. I will split. Yeah. Shameless. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You have to say it loud and proud. Because when it's done once, then you can time. carry on to look say forward loud and to proud. it. <laughs> loud budgeting. I've paid... And I'm proud. <laughs> loud budgeting. Yeah, loud budgeting. Yeah. Yeah. Loud budgeting. Yeah. Loud budgeting. But, but also factual. Again, yes. like, a, like there's just these moments sometimes where if someone's coppering up to kind of, they might have even had more, but they, I don't know, like there's something about if it's there or thereabouts, it's a bit of a headache to mm-hmm. overthink. But there's, I think, drinking and not drinking, bougie taste and not bougie taste, yep. a lot or appetite or whatever, and kids definitely. And by the time kids, kids you know, if it's a, a little bit on the side, in some restaurants, it's as expensive as one more drink. And so I've seen it where we just got, let's just split amongst the adults. Yeah. But no, we're parents and we're telling you, raise it and they're cheeky. Yeah. If they're not. Okay. So I've got a community win, which is a lovely one. So... I was putting off doing my budget for the longest time. Ignorance truly was bliss until I ripped the bandaid off and faced up to my figures. I've been following the financial method for two months now and I've seen the biggest change. I saved up a mini emergency fund, which I had to use recently and it's made me realise its importance. And I've budgeted for every penny. It felt strange at first, almost like I had no money because everything was accounted for. Now I can't believe I didn't do it sooner. It's given me ultimate peace of mind. Oh, well done. Very freeing. Do you know what? It's a really good point. When you do your budget for the first time and the financial method is obviously your income and then your fle- flexible, fixed expenses, flexible expenses and your sinking funds. And the sinking funds are parts of money for expenses that are coming up. They're not not coming up. They are coming, whether it's this month, next month, next year, they're coming. When you start to divide all that up and you put it away into the different parts, it suddenly feels like you're not left with a lot and it can it feels really frustrating. You're like, where's all my money gone? I'm like extra organised and, and I've not got a lot but when you need that money from that part over there whether it be like car tires going or suddenly like a washing machine breaks and there's a home maintenance pot somewhere or you know you need you need a new outfit for work or whatever and there's a little bit of money in a clothing fund the peace of mind that's mm-hmm. the word you gave is just amazing so it feels it's like, like a spark <gasps> yeah just light bulb moment like, that's why oh, yeah. that's why you do that but until that point it feels really restrictive it feels yeah. like you've not got a lot um, which is literally you know it's not a bad thing for some of us sometimes to feel that restrictiveness and to feel that um, that plan in place and then you can dip into it if you need it well done thank you so proud so if you want to tell us your wins, please post them in the community, in the app, or email us at thevault at financial.com. Time for dilemma number two. So, should my partner be paying more towards the bills since they earn more? Oh, I mean, this is topical on this episode for <laughs> splitting, so let's hear it. So, my husband of 10 years earns more than double what I do. We both pay the same towards our household bills. With the current energy prices, splitting the bills this way literally puts me into fuel poverty as I've as more than 10% of my income is spent on energy. Yet, I of course get no help as my partner's income means that as a household, we are not eligible. I have very little left over at the end of 
paying all of my expenses. And I feel like I spend more on my personal account on things for children here and there. We've We've always done it this way, but I don't know how much longer I can go on. I don't have enough left over to protect my future self or build up any form of savings. Please tell me there's a solution to this. Did you say she said double her husband? Double. Earns double. More than double what I do. Married 10 years. Mm-hmm. I would expect come this kind of, com- I was just about to say, I would expect this conversation at the start of a relationship where you're trying to suss out each other's like money personalities. It's like, like still what's like it? treading. Literally, like which side of the, the bed do you sleep on? I do left. You do. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, we're like we're like in that territory, and no. they've been together ten years and got children. Not so many women, in particular, because of the gender pay gap, fall uh, fall um, foul to this because their partner pay, uh, is earn, earns more because of the patriarchy, um, and they're expected to pay fifty fifty in the household or and pay for more when it comes to them or like. Children, um, children's holidays, related or household ex- expenses, cleaning products. It's not good enough. So there is no rules about whether you have to combine finances or not. Mm-hmm. You, know, the, you know, if you feel comfortable putting everything in one account because you're married and it's you know legally each other's anyway kind of thing, and that works really well for you, do it. You can still budget together but keep your money separate and it's one of the best things that you can do for your relationship because what it does is in the budget it puts it all in the income line so it's not you earn three grand this month and I earn one and a half it's we have earned four and a half this month how do we want to spend it and you can I don't mind him I mean I wouldn't like this but if he feels he earns more so he would like more personal money I feel like she'd be even be okay with that. What she's saying is, I'm actually in poverty here because Basic we're doing 50 she can't cover. Yeah. It's just <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. And we don't know the like, you know, whether she has taken time out to look after the children. We don't know whether she's got a, um, a, a less, uh, a career that you don't earn as much in, a more part-time that's flexible to help with the children in the house. There's lots of things you don't know, but nothing is like, in life is 50-50. That's really naive. I think when you're younger, it earnings tend to be a bit closer together. So 50-50 does make sense. But as these pay gaps start to come into play, and it could be the reverse, by the way, it could be the woman anymore. That is just ridiculous. However, I'm not calling him out on it. I'm calling the situation. Yeah. Sounds like she's just not raised it and he could just be going through life and yeah. <laughs> not really realising that he's like, oh, shall I buy another golf club? And she's yeah. like, uh, should I put the fleece on and the socks on yeah. because I'm Literally. cold? I think we've spoken to community members before whereby they've not kind of shared with the husband that they're falling behind and they were really worried about telling them and sharing and looking like they were trying to like grab more money. And I'm like, you literally can't survive. You know, no. they were paying more for... The ki- every time the kids clothes like we're growing out the clothes of which they do every week they were going to the supermarket buying them new clothes buying them snacks they were looking after them in them in the day they were buying the nappies from Aldi like they didn't realize I was like you literally need to write down how much you are spending on your children how yeah. much you have to your name and how much you spend on your on joint expenses in the household and circle them or highlight them joint expenses present them back it, this isn't an attacking thing it's sitting down and just being vulnerable and open and honest with the person that sat across from you that you're building a life together it's really important yeah it's it's a funny one isn't it it's when we think about um what things cost when you're the person that spends it most, you know more. But mm-hmm. the other person, whoever it is in the relationship, might not. And so mm-hmm. it can really help to see those mums or pings and go, oh, okay, they're, yeah. oh, they're doing this, oh, they're doing that. And actually f- to be very, very, to, to learn about that. And what I would say is for a minimum start, anything that's family expenses, make sure it's not from your personal account. Yeah. And so if there's a, if you have a system where there's a joint account and Take it's running it low, that. You need then you need to have that conversation. Um, but I can't express enough how wonderful it is as a couple to pool money, even if it's not physically mixing it up together, to kind of come together and go, these are just numbers. I earn this, you earn this. What do we both want to do in life? What do we want to do next week? What do we want to do today? Yeah. And can we collectively afford to do it? Because what you see time after time is when you split bills and you split meals and you split like um, responsibilities evenly that doesn't reflect someone's gonna be left behind it's usually usually the woman so um if you've got like a money goal to go on holiday together and the other person's like we're not we're not going because i can't afford it yeah literally how do you face that then you don't that's why getting financial goals aligned is really important Mm. as well because the the numbers are numbers and one person's gonna go i can't hit that and it's not my fault. Some people do like the percentage method where you you take yeah, more your proportional. Yeah, yeah, you're proportional. So you take your earnings and you look at the percent and and 
honestly, if you are responsible with money, because I think if you like, if you're irresponsible, if you're spending on stuff that you shouldn't be spending on, and you know that, and I can imagine why someone wouldn't want to then, well, I'm going to put more in and you're just going to spend it in a place that's- Frivolous like, way. Yeah, yeah, in a frivolous way. That's a great word. So so actually, what, but if, you, if you're not in that place as the person that earns more, because I've been both, I've been the person that earns more and I've been the person that's earned way less- it's such an amazing thing to support your family. It's just like, you, once you start thinking of it as you're not yours and it's the family's, especially when you've been together 10 years and presumably have children because she's referenced it, that is the ultimate. That's the goal. Because you don't, it's, it's not me and mine. It's Yeah, 10 ours. years in, you know, you've done a shift. Like, you, you know whether you're yeah. there to stay or you're yeah. not. So oh. live the life together. Like, have abundance. That's what you always say. When you're creating a budget, put it in together and yeah. have that feeling of abundance rather than get one person's <gasps> scarcity. Definitely. Good, I could never could... do this. I'm so picky. I'm, I'm vocal about it. Because yeah. we kind of, like, do our budget and we both put it used to be equal amounts into like eating out fund. And I'd be like, hold on, you will order way more food than me. You can <laughs> you also finish mine. So like, <laughs> you, you had one more. and a half meals. Do you invite him? You should invite him for the 50% request. cheeseburger. Want a request. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were also not married, not with children, not in that space yet. And so exactly. like easy, easy and yeah. gently and get him to listen to this and see what this yeah. is. Just send him a Monzo week. request. I do. Don't That's worry. how you communicate now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to close the vault. Any final words? Again, I think we said it on the last podcast, like honesty and transparency is going to be, is yeah. going to help our, our community members through these dilemmas that they're facing. And if not, just come and drop us a DM and we'll, we'll, we'll talk it out. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's all for this episode. The vault is now closed. Don't forget to invite your friends into the vault and share this podcast. Send us your dilemmas over email or voice note to the vault at financial.com. And just a disclaimer, the vault is just a chat around life and money and we are definitely not giving financial advice.